This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. Click the Fight TV link on WrestlingMayhemShow.com to support this show and watch pro wrestling, MMA, boxing, and so much more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash WrestlingMayhemShow. Hey guys, we're still here in Meadville, Night of the Superstars 6, and the legend is with us, Ricky the Dragon Steve. the fact that this was a, a big night for um, uh, a fundraiser. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, of course, helping Meadville High School here, uh, and, and a record-breaking crowd, of course, the Hardys here and everything, and, and Ricky, and I mean, I think they sold out the Mean Green, which was the first time ever. I think uh, the last number I heard was over 550. That sounds, yeah. That about right. 550 people at a meet and greet. Mm-hmm. That that is the biggest meet and greet I've ever been involved with, and I've been doing this for 41 years. And this is a meet and greet that ha- has had Ric Flair, uh, you know, Bret Hart, yeah. Roddy Piper, like a lot of guys. So yeah. that's that's awesome uh, to see that coming together the way yeah. it is here. So I think it's about the fifth or sixth uh, year for mm-hmm. this uh, for IWC to do this fundraiser for the school. Mm-hmm. Great, great thing. I love getting involved with fundraisers because I looked at number one you guys doing it is almost like giving back to the community mm-hmm. right and then you're bringing in the stars that help bring in more people and then all in all you look at the community is giving back and what they're doing to helping out and giving back to this high school mm-hmm. and middle school which they support you know uh, and then tonight watching some of the guys I don't know were you there earlier today I had a little class seminar going. I walked in on a little bit of that okay. so up, yeah. we had a little bit of one-on-one with some of the guys there and they asked some very intelligent questions gave them some um, hopefully some answers that they uh, will be able to apply and use uh, but what I did see is that there was a lot of knowledge sitting out there with the company mm-hmm. and I meant by company is talking about the wrestlers uh, well knowledge and I believe that what they're doing at their school, they're, they're doing everything in the, in the right direction. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Um, of course, last night, High Stakes, I was there with the camera ringside, and uh, uh, I, I, the, the thought in my head happened when they were talking about your plane was a little late yeah, yeah. and everything, and, and, they said, and they said the plane uh, had landed. I was like, the dragon has landed. And I heard that you came in, literally did a run-in from the car into the building into the ring. Well, uh, what would have been about a three-hour flight to get me from point A to point B ended yeah. up being a 12-hour day. Mm-hmm. And then by the time I got in the building, it wasn't less than three minutes that I had, was involved in the match. So based on a 12-hour day of getting here of travel, it all wired down to three minutes. <laughs> I had three minutes. I tell you. I, three minutes to get in the ring and you talk about timing, but that's our business. Mm-hmm. That's that's the luxury of our business, and, and what a great business. It's one of those amazing. I've been talking to the promoter here with Justin Plummer, and it's one of those amazing indie wrestling stories yeah. where, where like something connects like that. And I know, um, you know, I talked to a lot of the crowd afterwards, and it was like the most fun show they've ever seen. It was really great, a really well, great vibe. We we did a good thing at the end. I know uh, I was supposed to be earlier to, uh, uh, to do pictures and sign autographs, uh, and because of travel, that didn't happen. So we stayed. I I don't know, maybe another half an hour, 45 minutes mm-hmm. after the show, in between the guys taking the ring down a little bit at a time. And what we did, we had anybody that wanted to. Uh, we got in the ring. We uh, we took pictures with me. I uh, put the Hall of Fame ring on. And I don't have it on right now because I just got finished being a guest referee. Uh, we had a title change this, this mm-hmm. evening, uh, a new champion, uh, which is good. And uh, that turned out last night to uh, of, of another way of giving back to the fans, saying thank you for coming out and supporting this company. Mm-hmm. And uh, God, I don't know, we did another 40 or 50 people of pictures uh, last night. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. I saw some of those on social media this morning. It was real great. A lot of people excited. Um, so I was reminded, again, seeing you at ringside, um, um, seeing you get in there and you know, throw on... You know, throwing all the moves in there. I can, you know, uh, I can still throw great. a chopper too. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And we were like us on the podcast. We've been like really impressed with like when you know several years ago you and Jericho, and then you had a couple matches on Raw. Yeah. And what is your secret to be like as like I, I feel I, I as a fan I feel like you could go out there and have a five star match anytime. Yeah, I'm 64. Ways, you know, and obviously being this age, I, you know, you're a little slower getting up and down, but I try my best. But the, my secret, and I run into a lot of the guys that I worked with 30 years ago, yeah. you know, and they're asking me what was my secret. Well, uh, I never stopped 
exercising. I never stopped training. Um, it's just a part of me, part of my life. I started doing it as a young kid. But I will tell everybody out there that it has helped this. Now, I've been in, I've been in over 6,000 matches. I've been body slammed in uh, mostly in every single one of those matches. So how does the bone structure, the muscles, the tendons and everything, you know, and then my cohorts look at me and they say, yeah, you're a freak of nature. And I said, no, I just never stopped exercising, mm -hmm. which I've got to attribute that's got to be 90% of it. I, I try to eat well. Um, I'm human, so I have one junk day, and that's that. And that for me is pizza. For for Ricky Steamboat, that is pizza, no doubt about it. Pizza, pizza, pizza. But then I get back on my regular routine, and I work out and exercise, and uh, that you know, at the age of 64, that's that's kept me where I'm at. We'll have to attach our pizza sponsor with that uh, pizza. <laughs> Ricky, hey, Ricky says. <laughs> but anyways, uh, and again. Hall of Fame just happened just yeah. last weekend. Um, you know, I, I, you did the induction speech for Rick Rude. Right. Um, one, I need to find the match where, with the cage match that you talked about where he's doing the sit-ups on the you top know, of the I don't, I, I don't know if that was filmed or, you know, I, I don't know. I, it might have been just one of those live events, yeah. you know, that uh, we're out on the road. And um, he, he, was, he, he ranks up there with me, and I've worked with the best in the business over, over the years, and he ranks up there in, in my top five group. You know, it's like my, my golden circle of guys that I work with, the Ric Flairs, the Randy Savages, the Jake Roberts, uh, the Don Morocco's, and, and the Rick Roots. You know, those guys uh, were so good at what they did. And understand this, fans, that all the names I listed, they all had their own identity. Mm -hmm. They had their own characters, mm -hmm. you know. So uh, for me, it was always a blessing because it seemed like I was in the ring with somebody different, somebody new than other than a Randy Savage or a Ric Flair, you know. And then you have the Jake Roberts, uh, the evil one, the demon, and uh, uh, and then you know ravishing Rick Rude. So uh, you know, as hard as a lot of wrestlers talk about how do you adapt to working with different guys with different styles, I found out earlier in my career that that was the secret. You know, it's not so much to letting those guys trying to adapt to my style, mm -hmm. which is like, you know, you know, arm drags, and all that kind of stuff. But it was more that I would adapt to, to their style, which ultimately, at the end of the day, um, for me, was to have uh, the match of the night with, with whoever I, I was in the ring with. Now, uh, I thought it was a great honor to, to be able to induct um, uh, Ravishing Rick Rude. Uh, have his family there, his wife, his daughter, his son. What a good-looking kid, his son, yeah. The biggest comment is, when's he starting to train? Because <laughs> yeah. he looks good. Yeah, he's, he's got a good look, yeah. he's, and he's big, you mm -hmm. know. And um, it was a great honor to be able to, to be asked by the company, would, would you do that? And, uh, and I said, without a hesitation, I, I'd love to. Um, I didn't want to get out there and, and, and tell about all of his... Uh, uh, championship and titles that he you know and get into all that in the different you know territories and companies that he worked for i just wanted to uh, just bring it to the to everybody that was there watching about uh, some of the moments i had with him in the ring and um, and to me uh, they were very special some of the moments i saw working out the g in the gym because uh we all heard about that, you know, he was a, he was a great, like, a Minnesota State arm wrestling champion. He took sixth at the Worlds. Now, I'm not just talking about on a national level. This is on a world-class level. And, uh, and I, I can... Those, all those muscles weren't just for show. No, I yeah. can attest to that the, the, the man's strength, because you could feel it in the ring. Um, and I wasn't, I wasn't joking when, it was, when he laid his arm over the edge of that bench and he's, and he's curling 80-pound dumbbells. And I'm not saying... He's not struggling. He's doing a dozen of them, mm -hmm. you know? I went over there when everybody wasn't looking and tried to get, you know, one or two up. And here's a guy just repping out a dozen. Well, that just attests, uh, you know, he was uh, almost like a freak of nature when it comes to the, the hand strength and the forearm strength that, that he had. That's yeah. That's amazing. Well, thank you so much. I know you had a long night here at, uh, in Meadville. Uh, thank you so much for being a part of the show and uh, chatting with us. Uh, we're going to drag in the Speedboat yeah. Hall of Famer. Uh, where can people check you out online? you got Twitter and stuff, right? I got all that. But, you know, <laughs> I, I, I try not to get too much involved with it because I found out how much and talking with the other guys who do it, how much mm -hmm. it can occupy them. Oh, yeah. 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 It's, uh, oh, yeah. yeah so. uh, you don't need to grow the fan base <laughs> at this point, right? <laughs> well, thank you so much. Thank Enjoy you. your night and have a good one. We want to see who else we're going to find here in the halls back here in Meadville High School. Thanks. Oh.
This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.